Okay, so before we move on and define our services, I'm actually gonna do some cleanup here. So let's do Docker volume LS to list out all of the volumes here. And I actually wanna remove all of these. So I'm gonna do Docker volume remove, and I'm gonna have it list out each container. And I'm gonna use the dash Q flag so it just lists out the volume names and this will delete each one. Okay, so if I do Docker volume LS, we've cleaned out all of our Docker volumes. Docker network LS, I'm gonna do a similar thing but not exactly the same because I wanna keep the default ones. You sh you're supposed to keep the default ones that Docker creates out of the box. The only one I've created is the one called AppNet and I'm gonna delete that. So Docker network, not volume, remove AppNet. Okay. Just confirm that it's all cleaned up. It is, great. So back to our Docker file here, we can define some services. And let's start with an easy one. The first one I want to get and configure is gonna be Redis. Now, we are defining a service name here. The name is pretty arbitrary, but I like to do simple ones. Like this could actually be cache if I was gonna name it after our use case. So actually, let's do that. I'm gonna name it cache to name our service off of its use case more so than the specific technology that it's using to run a cache. This one's really simple. I want to grab the image, and the image I want to grab is Redis, so it's going to be the official Redis image. And the tag I want, like I could do latest if I want, but I'm actually going to grab the tag Alpine, which is going to grab the Redis image that is based off of the Alpine-based uh, image, which is known in the Docker community for being very small. It's a very tiny image, so it has a very small footprint. It's easy to download and run. And I don't need to do anything to the Redis container. I don't need to customize it at all. And because Alpine's a little harder to work with in terms of building stuff into a Linux Alpine container, I don't really like to use it if I'm going to be customizing our container at all. But in this case, we're not going to do that at all. So Redis with the Alpine tag is just fine. Okay, so the next thing I want to define is the network. I want to have Docker Compose spin up the cache service using the Redis Alpine image. And I want it to add this image, add this container when it runs it into the network AppNet that we defined down here. So the networks area here is going to tell Docker Compose what network to create. And then up here in our services, we're telling the cache service to add the container it creates into that AppNet network. Okay, next, we are gonna make a database service. I'll just name it DB. The image for this one is gonna be MySQL at tag 5.7, which is exactly what we used before. And again, this will also be in that same network. That network will be AppNet. Now, if you remember when we spun up that container, let's see, Docker run, and we see that when we spun up my MySQL container before, we passed in a bunch of environment variables. So we wanna do that again here in this Docker Compose file. And that's simple, we have an environment keyword here, and then we can just set the environment variables as needed. So the root password is gonna be secret. I actually had root in the previous video, but we can keep it secret as well. My SQL database will be homestead, the user will be homestead, the password will be secret, that's exactly like we did before. And the environment variables, variables will just be set for the container whenever the container gets spun up from the MySQL image. Now, just as a quick reminder, these are only used the first time we spin up a new MySQL image that doesn't have a volume attached to it with database data. So MySQL spins up, it actually has its own entry point script, and that entry point script is gonna determine if there's any data already created or not. If there is, then it just uses that data, and if there's not, then it reinitializes a new instance of MySQL server and then sets all of this data based off the environment variables. So if you wanted to change a password later, like this, you'd actually have to get rid of your DB data volume and let Docker Compose create a new one, and then it would use these environment variables to reset a new password. So don't think just changing this is gonna reset that password every time you spin up a new instance of the MySQL container using Docker Compose. It's only that first time when you first initialize it. Okay, so we have a cache uh, service here, we have a DB service here. We can actually start and try to spin this up. So I'm gonna do Docker Compose, we can do the dash H flag here just to see and get a help menu, but I'm gonna do PS to have it list out stuff. Unsupported config option network. So it probably just doesn't like some syntax I have here. Oh, and actually networks is plural. Okay, great, because you can add it to multiple networks. So networks should be plural here. Let's go ahead and clear this out and do Docker Compose PS. Okay, so Docker Compose PS is just like Docker PS except it is specific to the containers that are running off of the Docker Compose file here. But what I can do is do Docker Compose up to start these containers, and I'll do up-d to push them into the background. So now, creating network, creating volume, creating volume, pulling cache, right? It's pulling Redis Alpine because it knows I want that image and I didn't have it yet. I already have the MySQL 5.7 image, so it doesn't do that. 
it already saw that I had it, and it spins them up, right? It's creating PHP app cache one and PHP app DB one. So notice that these uh, container names are a bit interesting, right? They are namespaced by the directory they are in. So Docker Compose, if you're running multiple apps at the same time, namespace the containers it creates by the directory that the Docker Compose file is in just to prevent any things from clashing. So it does the same thing with the Docker networks as well. So Docker network isn't just AppNet, it's PHP app AppNet because it's running the Docker Compose file out of the PHP app directory. Okay, so Docker Compose PS. We see all that stuff exists. That's great. I'll do Docker Compose down. And down doesn't just stop your containers, it destroys them. But it is still the workflow you should do up and down, not start and stop, even though the start and stop commands exist. So this actually didn't just stop the containers, it also removed them, right? So I don't have stopped containers, they're just destroyed completely. And it removed the network, but it did not remove the volumes, right? So Docker volume LS, our volumes are still here and they are still there because Docker Compose knows not to destroy them. And it knows not to destroy them because the volumes are assumed to be persistent data, data that we want around. So if I do Docker Compose up dash D again, it's actually gonna reuse these and to see this is gonna be a quicker uh, uptime. It's reusing them. My SQL is already initialized because it got initialized the first time it got run. It's reusing the DB data volume, which already has a database in it and a user and a password and all that. So it's just reusing it. And it recreates that network because the networks can get created and destroyed anytime Docker Compose up and down is run as well. I could do Docker and Compose stop, but then we have these Docker containers just setting around, you know, using memory essentially for no reason. It doesn't matter. They don't need to be uh, stopped and started. It's better generally to do uh, up and down. Okay, great. So obviously we have not done our application container yet. So in the next video, we'll set that up.